Liverpool 4 Barcelona 0, a tactical analysis. Before the video starts, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the content coming over the summer. And if you could like and share the video, that would help the channel a lot and be much appreciated. Klopp set out his side in much the same way he did at the Camp Nou in a man-to-man -man pressing system, and he this time he would use Origi to press to Sturgeon, while Fabinho pushed up onto Busquets. Unlike at Camp Nou, Barcelona were unable to play through the press in the first leg. The advanced nature of the Liverpool wide players left Alba and Roberto open for a lofted ball to beat the narrow Liverpool press. However, Klopp's side were far more brave in their press, as Robertson and Arnold wouldn't hesitate to race out to confront the fullbacks if they received the ball. It has to be said that Barcelona were particularly poor in their passing, with Longley and Piquet slowing the ball into Sturgeon's long passes, not as accurate as usual when under pressure. The energy of Milner, Henderson and Fabinho in the centre of midfield was a fundamental reason why the press was so effective, as any heavy touch or slightly misplaced pass into the Barcelona central players would lead to a turnover. Fabinho was excellent throughout the game, putting in attack stopping tackles and making aggressive interceptions when the chance arose. A player who didn't have these attributes may have hesitated when the chance came about and this could have been enough to allow Barcelona to feed the ball into Messi, Fidel, Coutinho and bypass this press. I thought that in the first half Barcelona weren't terrible, Messi and Busquets were able to play a number of key passes over the top and in the inside of Alexander-Arnold for Jordi Elba to overlap onto, though the Spaniard was poor in finding a Barcelona player in the box when in that position. Vidal was very good at breaking up the play with tackles and screening passing lanes into Mane and Origi as Barcelona defended in their narrow 4-4-2 shape. Liverpool's dominance when in possession largely stemmed from Barcelona not engaging in an aggressive high press from Liverpool's build-up as they did in the first leg. Suarez and Messi seemed pretty content to allow Matip and Van Dijk to have time on the ball. In the 4-3-3 shape, Henderson was encouraged to move in behind Rakitic and sit between the lines and Liverpool had joy when Fabinho or Matip were able to find him in this position. Valverde should have switched to a five-man midfield as a narrow four with Vidal tucked in on the right left space on the left for Robertson to be used as an outlet in. Down the left, Liverpool looked threatening as Mane stayed on the inside of Roberto, causing him confusion on whether to move out wide to close down Robertson or stay tight to Piquet. Barcelona would essentially move into a 4-2-3-1 when Liverpool reverted to a flat 5 in midfield and Barcelona were able to play through the press. Rakitic and Busquets would play as a double pivot, but the narrowness of Vidal as a right midfielder should have meant that the right back played almost as a winger when in possession, though Roberto was reluctant to move into this space. This allowed Robertson to stay narrow alongside Van Dijk when out of possession, but was also bombing forward down the left where he looked threatening with his low crosses in the box. In the second half, Barcelona looked lethargic and lacked the same energy that Van Alden, Fabinho and Henderson had. Liverpool were first to any of the second balls, and Busquets and Rakitic looked like they were treading mud, unable to press Henderson or Van Alden aggressively or play balls into the forward line when the ball was won back. Alexander Arnold was a man of the match and the main difference between the two legs. As I stated in the tactical analysis of the first leg, Liverpool missed Arnold's ability to dribble forward onto the right flank with Gomez playing there instead. Arnold's crossing was Liverpool's main weapon, as seen with Wijnaldum's first goal and Origi's winner. The position of Shakiri was also a tactical change from the first game as instead of hugging the touchline, he would move narrow into the half space and when on the ball, he would look for either a lofted cross or pass towards the back post or a whip cross in to the middle as seen with Liverpool's third goal. Dembele should have been brought on earlier for Barcelona as they had no pace to run in behind Liverpool on the counter and the lack of runners left Messi hanging onto the ball for too long, giving Fabinho or Henderson the chance to win the ball back. In the end, it was a miracle-like performance from all of the Liverpool players and Klopp's tactical changes were the critical key to dominating this Barcelona side. Though from Barcelona's point of view it looks concerning, with this being the second time they have thrown away a big lead and look like sitting ducks in Valverde's labouring 4-4-2 restrictive system. Thank you for watching, remember to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this.